scale guidance. How can you get that? The simplest case is to have uh, some situation where you have uh, two sectors of Mugabe theories where they have different dynamical components. So two decoupled theories? Decoupled on the RG, they don't have to be decoupled in the UV. Okay, but isn't that scale invariant? It's not. Because they have two different uh, dynamic components. You cannot do a simple scanning in the case of Mugabe. Um, but that, that's yeah. particular to uh, non Lorentz <coughs> variant theories. The examples that I know of are four of this high. Yeah, but I mean, if, if it's Lorentz invariant, then z would be one, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so you cannot do that for Lorentz UV Lorentz invariant systems, right? Yeah. Okay. Where was Gapless relativistic bosons that interested this? Uh, it doesn't really it's not really so I should really have one more line saying that can be a piece of spontaneous information. Okay, this is the this is abstractly what quantum phases of matter can be. But on the other hand, we want to understand the quantum phases of matter that emerge in quantum materials, and the quantum materials have their own landscapes. Uh, but what I mean, for example, let's consider four, four pieces of different quantum materials. In these four cases, in the first case, it can be modeled by some two-dimensional square lattice spin one half system. So this dot, that dot, is a spin one half. And in the second case, it's spin one. And here, I have more spin one halves, and here, also some spin one halves. Uh, I will assume that all these cases, there's SO3 spin rotation asymmetry, and uh, the lattice symmetry of the square lattice. Uh, and I claim uh, for those four cases, B and C will have the same landscape of quantum phases of matter in the sense that by tuning the parameters of harmonics in case B and case C, they can achieve the same set of quantum phases of matter, but A, D, and B, C, they will have different landscapes. Uh, part of the task of this talk is to explain this. Uh, I want to in, now immediately show the take home message. The take home message is that we can use the method of anomaly matching, which may be quite familiar to many of the audience here. Uh, we can use it to systematically check whether uh, a quantum phase of matter can emerge in a quantum material uh, by checking this anomaly matching condition. Um, there are many experts here, so I should really say to go from this direction to this direction, this is anomaly matching. To go from the other direction to go in the other direction uh, is a conjecture which encounters no counter example, so I will be using it. I will also explain this uh, equation, this simple equation in more details later. Okay, this is the all time of the talk. Uh, I will first talk about this emergibility, meaning the possibility to emerge of some states in some quantum materials, and then talk about anomaly matching and show you some simple applications, some interesting applications. Let's start from this emergibility problem. Uh, so this problem is asking the following question. Suppose I want to consider a quantum phase of natural quantum phase transition, say described by a certain kind of refractive field theory, uh, and I have a piece of quantum material, I want to ask by tuning the parameters of this quantum material whether it's possible for this particular refractive field theory to emerge at low energies and large distances in the ground state. Uh, just to make the question more concrete, let's look at this particular example. Let's take this quantum phase or phase transition to be the O3 in that integral theory or Wilson phase theory described by this kind of uh, field theory Lagrangian. And for the quantum material, let's consider the case where this quantum material can be well modeled by two dimensional square lattice spin one half system. Uh, again, we have this cartoon. Uh, so here, I want by square lattice spin one half system, to have SO3 spin rotation asymmetry and the lattice translation symmetry. So here you see after a bunch of spins, they can interact, and their interactions may be modeled by the harmonic. Here SI and SJ uh, are the spin operators of uh, at different sizes, and as showed this harmonic before. Uh, what I want to really emphasize here is that I really have this dot 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 term. And the meaning of this dot 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 term is any local symmetric interaction. So that means as long as I have a harmonic as local, 
in the sense that um, spins far away do not interact with, with each other, and the Hamiltonian respects the symmetry, I will consider it as a valid Hamiltonian. So I really have many, many choices of the Hamiltonian. And now the question is, by tuning the parameters of, by tuning all possible parameters of this big family of Hamiltonians, whether there's at least one choice of the parameters so that the uh, not distance knowledge physics can be described by the Lambda post three Lambda Ginsburg Western Fisher theory. Uh, this is a question uh, I'd like to ask you to vote if you think uh, it can emerge for at least one particular set of choice of parameter. Please raise your right. Wait, wait, wait. Can you first say, uh, do you, are we required to keep lattice symmetries? Yeah, yeah. You, we, we need to keep for these symmetries. Okay. Uh, yeah. The arrow should be in the other way, right? This emerges in. Yeah. If it emerges in that. From <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if, it, if, it, if, it, if you think the answer is yes, please uh, use your left hand. If uh, no, uh, <laughs> you are not sure. Uh, oh, that's too complicated. Yes or no? Okay, uh, if you think it's yes, use your hand. Yes to flip or. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I saw most of people didn't use the hand, so it doesn't seem to be possible. Uh, that's actually correct. Uh, so the answer to this question is, uh, for, for this particular session, we're happy here, actually, no matter how you tune the parameters of this part here, mm, as long as you keep all these symmetries, it's impossible for this theory to emerge uh, in the ground state. Uh, part of the task is to explain this. Maybe you remember in, in the morning, Anders thought he showed something similar, uh, but he showed a similar model, but his model really has two layers of the square lines. Here I'm just having one layer. This is actually a big difference. Uh, okay, so basically, I want to understand this type of immutability problem. Uh, and to, make, uh, to, to, to understand this problem, I need to to be able to answer these questions, I need to be able to have some characterization of the quantum phase uh, I'm interested in and also the quantum material I'm interested in. Usually, we can use the effective field theory to describe the quantum phase of phase transition. Okay, that's good. Suppose we know it. Now, um, let's discuss how we should characterize the quantum material. Here, I will characterize the quantum material using its symmetry properties. By this, uh, I actually mean three pieces of data. The first piece of the data is the symmetry group. So in the previous example, it includes the SO3 spin rotation symmetry and the Latin symmetry. Uh, besides this, uh, to really specify the symmetry property, I will also specify the locations <coughs> of the degree freedom. So in the, in the previous example, it means now all must be one half are located at the vertices of the uh, lattice instead of some other places. Uh, and also, I will specify the nature of the degree freedom. Here, by this, I mean whether they are spin 1 half or spin 1 or spin 2, and so on. The reason I want to specify all these three pieces of information is that actually all these three pieces of information are some robust symmetry properties of the quantum material. They're, they're all robust, assuming we have the symmetry. So, we see, so suppose we have the symmetry. If you go back to the previous picture of the square lattice spin 1 half system, you see actually the locations uh, of the spin one half are something robust. If you try to move the locations, you will actually break the lattice symmetry. Also, uh, whether it's spin one half or spin one is of course some robust property. Uh, this is the first thing you need to specify for any theoretical model to study it. So you may want, uh, usually in the quantum matter study, we may, we may have some Hamiltonian, quantum many body Hamiltonian that we want to solve, and we try to understand the physics of the ground state of this Hamiltonian. But apparently, I'm not doing that. I'm not fixing any Hamiltonian. The reason for me to not fix that Hamiltonian is because of a few reasons. First, usually if you have a quantum material, say this piece of quantum material or this piece of quantum material, uh, for people uh, unfamiliar with the context, these are two uh, quantum materials that are the candidate of the so-called quantum spin uh, Usually if you have these quantum materials, it's pretty hard to really determine its Hamiltonian experimentally. However, it's experimentally much easier to determine these three pieces of data. One can do neuron scattering, one can do x-ray to determine, uh, say, the 
uh, steam to move and uh, the nature of different freedom and so on. Uh, furthermore, if we have a piece of quantum material, we can actually tune the Hamiltonian. For example, we can add some pressure, we can add some strain, we may add some electromagnetic field, so the Hamiltonian can actually be tuned. Uh, and the reason I want to tune the Hamiltonian is because by tuning the Hamiltonian, it will bring me uh, with more, with richer possibilities. Maybe by tuning the Hamiltonian, <coughs> I will be able to reach more interesting quantum phases of matter. So that's the reason why I don't want to uh, fix the Hamiltonian. I just want to fix this robust symmetry properties of the quantum material. So another eligibility becomes, suppose I know those symmetry properties of the quantum material, suppose I know the effective field theory, I ask whether there's any possibility for this effective field theory to emerge in one state of this quantum material with this given symmetry properties. Now I, will, I want to provide uh, the method to answer this question. So uh, essentially, uh, these three, it turns out that these three pieces of uh, symmetry properties are actually the same as the quantum anomaly of this quantum material. Uh, I will not use the uh, general definition of the anomaly as an obstruction to get it, but actually for the purpose of this talk, the anomaly can have a simple definition in the context we are facing with. So here the anomaly is essentially viewed, the anomaly of the quantum material can be viewed as how the flux in the material experiences the symmetry. Let me explain this through the example. So let's again look at the square lattice spin one half system and square lattice spin one system. Uh, so I will examine why the TX T1 and the TY TX are the same. So this square lattice has two translation symmetries. There's translation along X, translation along Y. I will call translation along X TX and translation along Y TY. So I want to examine uh, what the, uh, the effect of tending by first moving something along X and then along Y is the same as moving something along Y and then along X. So I want to examine whether the order between Tx and Ty is important. Let's do that. Suppose I start from the spin here, and move it along x, and then move it along y, I will take the spin here. Yes. <coughs> On the other hand, if I move it along y and then along x, I will take the same spin. This is telling us all the spins, Tx, Ty, and Ty, Tx are actually the same. Um, this is true for both the spin 100 and the spin 1 axis. But now let's examine whether this is still true for the SO3 flux, let's consider some pure SO3 flux. Uh, in, case you are, in case this concept is unfamiliar, and the, by pure SO3 flux, I mean the flux created by the SO3 molecule, SO3 instant molecule. So uh, in 2 plus 1 is just a point here, this flux is just a point. Now I want to examine Tx, Ty, and the Tx, whether they are the same for the flux. Let's see, I move it along x and I move it along y. I compare the result with moving along y and along x. Uh, now you see these two trajectories enclose a spin one half in this case and a spin one in the other case. There is actually some upper bone effect uh, telling us if this is spin one half, then there is actually a minus one upper bone phase factor uh, in this case, but upper bone phase factor for this case is plus one. So this is telling us uh, Tx, Ty, and Ty, Tx are not the same for the SO3 flux in the spin 1 half lattice, but they are the same uh, in the spin 1 lattice. Uh, in the more formal language, this is saying actually uh, this spin 1 half lattice has a non trivial quantum anomaly, but the uh, spin 1 lattice has a trivial quantum anomaly. These quantum anomalies are also sometimes known as the uh, Lipschitz Marcus anomaly. So previously, people knew uh, those systems. Some of those systems have contribute quantum anomaly. Some of those systems do not have the anomaly. But people didn't know the full characterization of the complete set of all anomalies of these quantum of these uh, lattice systems. Uh, one of the key contributions of this paper is to derive uh, the full expressions of the anomalies for large class of lattice systems. For example, again, let's consider two-dimensional lattice spin systems. Uh, let's suppose there's some lattice symmetry which I call GS. This GS can be any one of the 17 space groups in two dimensions. In two space dimensions, there are in total 17 different space groups. They're also called the wallpaper groups because it's in 2D. Uh, GS can be any of them. And the internal, uh, is some internal symmetry. Uh, here, by internal symmetry, I just mean the symmetry that doesn't move the locations of the Lewis freedom uh, in high energy. It's also sometimes called global symmetry. It can be SO3 spin locational symmetry 
for timely voltage symmetry and others. Then we automatically this quantum anomaly can be characterized by some element in this cohomology. Uh, and in this paper, you can actually, uh, yeah, the, I'm skipping ahead, let me uh, go slow. So uh, you see, uh, this, uh, this expression kind of factorizes into a few pieces. Uh, this, this eta and this, this lambda. This eta turns out to, it tells us the matrix of the degree freedom, and lambda uh, tells us about the locations of the degree freedom. So the bottom line is that uh, using uh, all the three important, robust, symmetry-related properties of quantum materials can be compactly encoded in the quantum anomaly. And we know the precise expressions uh, for all the things. I will not explain the details here, but let's look at the examples. So again, we are looking at the uh, four examples we, I, I, I showed before. Uh, so uh, we have some square lattice with either spin one or spin one halves. Uh, I would demand what you see, what these four systems have the same symmetries. For example, they will have the same symmetry as lattice symmetry as the square lattice. You see there's translation on X, translation on Y, lattice degree rotational symmetry, and reflection symmetries. And here too, uh, there's translation on X, translation on Y, some lattice degree rotational symmetry, and some and I also demand they will have the same as uh, uh, internal symmetry. For example, it can be SO3 spin rotational symmetry. But a question, reasonably, in the, given the IR, this symmetry would be embedded in some other emergent symmetries. But in this case, actually, I don't know how you can use the anomaly matching in order to predict anything. I was sure. Okay. What is the difference between A and D? Uh, I guess you are asking this question because you you build okay, you have the 45 degrees, they seem to be the same. Is this the reason for the question? Uh, good question. So, uh, when I say I demand all these four cases have the same symmetry, I mean it in a very strict sense. For example, here, uh, this translation from here to here, is, this is a translation symmetry, and from here to here is also a translation symmetry. I'm not assuming from here to here this diagonal or what is a translation symmetry. If I do assume, then they are the same, but I'm not assuming. Um, so I forgot the details of this paper, but there's this work about this, uh, what's it called, lattice homotopy. Are you familiar with this idea that you somehow move spins, like you insert some trivial spin, then you move them in a way consistent with the crystalline symmetries? <coughs> and uh, like, can you point out a connection between that and this? Like, it's also trying to say like which things can be deformed into each other. And can yeah, actually, we do have these expressions based on that. Uh -huh, okay, so it's using kind of the, the homotopy. So it's entire lattice symmetry that you take into account, reflection, I'm taking all lattice symmetry. Translation, everything. 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 And what about time reversal? Is that? Yeah, it's also included. Where, where is time reversal? It's part of, it's, it's part of the internal symmetry. I put them both in internal symmetry. So, ah, uh, I see. Like, are there cases where you can get non trivial constraints with only lattice symmetries? Not in this context. Because you might expect that. They get embedded just in gravity, you know, it forces you to have a gravitational anomaly in the CFT. So, the context that I'm considering, uh, which I think is experimentally relevant, that is a physical system obtained by putting something to put them at various locations. Uh, in this context, what you said doesn't really happen. Uh, you, you, you mean that when, you, when the internal symmetry group is trivial, you don't have any interesting consequences? Right. Other questions? So, uh, is there an intuition why the space group or the inside group? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is actually not generic. This is actually just because I'm considering some particular types of internal symmetries, like SO3 and also and others. Uh, the reason to consider these internal symmetries is because they are kind of more experimentally relevant. Uh, if these are the internal symmetries we consider, then the relation here is for others, it can be something different. That's the same question. Ah. Okay. Then let me repeat uh, uh, the main message again. Uh, so suppose I want I have some quantum material that has a symmetry to UV, and I want to ask whether some effective theory with symmetry GLR can emerge in this quantum material. I will check this anomaly matching condition. Here, for me, little omega and the capital omega are the quantum anomalies of the quantum material. Of the effective theory respectively. So 
the, the quantum anomaly of the quantum material were derived in this paper, and the quantum anomaly of the effective theory uh, can be derived using the field theory. And this phi is here in this context is a group homomorphism that takes the UB to a subgroup of GMR. Physically, this means how the microscopic symmetries are invited into the emergent symmetries. Uh, to, uh, just to answer your question. Then just from this, we can have a simple application of for the statement. Um, because as I said before, what these four cases have uh, B and C have the same anomaly, A and the, actually B and C do not have any non-trivial anomaly, and A and B have non-trivial anomalies and they have different anomalies, and then uh, we conclude uh, B and C will have the same landscape of quantum phases of matter, but A, the pair of B and C, and E will have different landscapes. Furthermore, for the Nanda Ginsburg theory, because it has no quantum anomaly by itself, this anomaly cannot match A or D, but it can match U and C. Uh, that's why it can imagine B and C, but not A or D. This is a simple application. I will show you more interesting applications. I have a question. So, uh, that, that, why does the Wilson feature have trivial anomaly? Is this a general, a general argument, or you, do some, you must do some realistic uh, calculation to, to that one? And I think the simplest intuition is to consider the symmetric phase or this order the phase of the Western feature theory. Then you can take the gap to infinity. Then in the ground state, there's, there's just one ground state that's completely dull. You cannot have any analysis. You, you can also gauge it trivially. So three, you just put, you know, you promote the derivative to a covariant derivative, and there's no anomaly. Ah, right. Anomaly is obstruction to gauge. It. So okay. There's the scale. There's no fermion. Or from the other perspective, anomaly is obstruction to having trivial gap one state with the gap coupling, so you can have an anomaly. Okay. okay, now let me show you more interesting applications. Uh, I, I want to apply this framework to the so the stable liquids. Uh, stable liquids are some quantum states of a matter uh, proposed in this paper. Uh, they are supposed to be a two plus one dimensional field pseudo uh, theory or conformal theory. Uh, is because uh, I think I need to go faster. Uh, so uh, there are many stable liquids. Uh, each of them has an index called N. N is an integer larger than 4. It can be 5, 6, 7, and so on. Then for stable liquid with index N, it has this symmetry, S1 plus S1 minus 4. And this anomaly is of this type. Uh, also, we know a little bit about its uh, dynamics. Uh, so you may wonder why we can So basically, this. These three pieces with the information is basically more or less the characterization of what we should have in mind about the physical properties of the stable liquid. And we don't want to ask why do I want to consider this, this particular strange symmetry and this particular anomaly. It's actually because at the beginning we were thinking of the deconfined quantum criticality, and that's what I was talking about. And another state that, that studied in this matter quite a lot for the large liquid, we studied these two and then we found that we can generalize them into an infinite family. That's the stable liquid. Now, I want to classify different stable liquids in natural systems. So, uh, the question is I have some natural system with symmetry GUV, and I want to ask uh, whether the uh, stable liquid can emerge. And according to what we described before, the challenge is to, find, to search for group homomorphisms that makes this anomaly matching condition whole. Uh, if we can find one such group homomorphism, uh, then this represents a way to realize the stable liquid in this particular analysis uh, with anomaly little omega. Uh, and if uh, two different uh, group homomorphisms are not smoothly connected, then, then they represent different uh, stable liquid realizations. There are some remarks which let me uh, see. Let me just show you the result. So, uh, this is a very systematic framework. We can do it very systematically, and we can find all possible ways to realize the stable liquids. Uh, here are some, this is the summary of part of the results. The more complete results can be found in the paper. So we can consider how you can have this mirror half system, triangular lattice mirror half system, carbon lattice, square lattice, and triangular lattice, and actually all, all of them. Uh, this is just a part of the results. Sorry, I missed. What is the defining property of stable liquids? It's the symmetry anomaly and part of some kind of the dynamics. I should do it before. Okay. So it's some particular anomaly, right? Yeah. It has some particular anomaly. Uh, this is not to be compared with the previous literature. Uh, you can see uh, from this comparison, 
use our method, we can not only reproduce all the previously constructed realizations of the state boundaries with n equal 5, which is the deconfined point criticality and the bot, and the state boundaries with n equal 6, which is the direct boundaries which people have also studied. But even for those two theories which people did study, we can also uncover many previously unknown realizations. Some of them are actually very interesting. For example, some of them are uh, young, so called quantum mean field paradigm, even for drugs clinically. So I'm, I think I'm meaning a bit slow. So um, the, a given steeple liquid specifies this capital omega, your anomaly, I guess. Is that correct? And then this phi. Um, so, so you're, 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 when you say you have different possible ways of realizing stiff liquids, it's different functions phi? Different the group homomorphisms of phi. Uh-huh. And then it's clear that for each of those, you can construct <coughs> um, a corresponding theory with those. Like for each solution, there exists a, a theory that has a correspondence between UV and IR. Uh, uh, so if I find a solution, it means there's a group homomorphism that can make the anomaly match condition hold. I guess you're asking why the actual recipe to construct the lattice can't come Or it's clear it's always existed? Yeah, it's, it's not clear. Yeah. It's part of the conjecture. Oh, I see. And it might be fine too, right? Is it correct? Um, that's part of the uh, remark that I didn't go through. Um, the stability is determined by the GUV is symmetric equations, which we also have some projection. So uh, the methods listed here are actually four stable realizations. Stable realizations? Yeah. Meaning, there's for these two columns, there's no symmetric realization. For this one, there's only one, but according to Anders, maybe there's another one. So, so what the stability, the, the, the results of the stability rely on the scaling dimensions of the operators in the theory. Uh, because these scaling dimensions are still time dependent, people don't have a consensus. So the stability result may be time dependent. And this fire and uh, stable liquid, they're related to some SPM gauge theory? I forget what it is. Yeah, our, our conjecture for the larger and stable liquids is that they cannot be described by any gauge theory. They are not branching. In the sense that they do have a weekly cap and unique cap ratio. Do we know that they exist? That's another part of the conjecture. We have some evidence for that, but it's conjecture. What, what is the evidence? The, the evidence is essentially, ultimately, it's basically the N equal to 5 case is more or less already conformal. The N equal to 6 case, N equal, which is also N equal to 4. Uh, in M equal to 4, QED3, which looks pretty conformal. Then there's some larger analysis uh, that suggests with larger N, uh, it should be conformal, so it's natural conjecture in the middle of that will conformal. So there is no controlled field theory, right? It's some other normalizable algebra. Right, <coughs> right. Um, but although there's no controlled field theory, uh, one can argue uh, from the way how the fixed points can annihilate naturally to get this conclusion. Starting from two dimensions? In two dimensions. Just, uh, no, no, in two plus one dimensions. Just in two plus one dimensions. By changing the N and changing the... This thing you can be formulated using a nominal model by changing the, um, what, the level of the West Moon we can turn in the nominal model. That's not the normalized It's not. Great. So is there any control of large N and large K? No. But uh, here the point is not to have the control, but to uh, see how the facial points can annihilate and appear. We, we know some limited cases. For example, if there's no West signal we can tell, uh, you may describe some order disorder transition in the non model. Uh, there exists a fixed point, and uh, with a larger N, usually the ex with a larger level, the usual experience is that it will flow to the uh, goldstone phase directly. Then one asks, in the middle, by changing the what's in the weekend level, how the fixed points can annihilate and so on. Uh, the natural scenario is to have it on there. So for all these cases, there is a reason why the fixed points are non-linear signal model with the Wesley Miller term? Yeah. With the Wesley Miller term. Uh, it's called still liquid because the non-linear signal model is defined on the manifold. So Stiefel didn't study. Still for the study, he didn't study the liquid. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me uh, show you some particular case. 
Uh, so, uh, what is the manifold that you have in mind? Can you say what is the manifold? That's point one, that's all four. It's for all n, it works? Yes. For all n, this uh, reproduces the thing? Yeah, actually, the expression of the West Middle written term were, were, were not written down in your data. So, let me uh, just uh, highlight two particular uh, realizations of the A equals 7 stable liquid, which we conjecture exists and cannot be described by any gauge theory. Uh, one is on triangular lattice scale one half system, the other is on carbon lattice scale one half system. From our method, because we know how the microscopic symmetries are divided into the emerging symmetries, we can actually make out the structure of the phase diagram. So, for these two, I know the precise symmetry between patterns of the symmetry breaking phases. For example, uh, this symmetry breaking pattern, I think it has a name called deja vu, deja hydro order, and this has a name called cube deja order in the quantum magnetic definition. Uh, this part, these two particular symmetry breaking phases were actually previously reported in some numerical studies of lattice models. This provides very useful information, guiding information towards realizing this wondrous mistake, because uh, we can just start from the symmetry breaking phases and explore the vicinity in the first diagram to see whether we can uh, hit the more interesting stable liquid. And the smoking gun signature experimentally maybe some SOs, emergent SOs across SO3 symmetry. Uh, hopefully it can be seen by using neutron and the X ray after high resolution X ray after many years. Uh, basically that's what I want to talk about also if we're running out of time. So um, yeah maybe that can just stop. Thanks. Had some uh, discussion during the talk, so if there is one urgent question, uh, otherwise we can do it in the regular way. For one D, one plus one D system, is there some some analogous uh, expression for the anomaly? Yes, we also have it. Is it richer or more richer or less rich? Um, um, using my gauge of what <laughs> richer means, I think it's less. Because in 1D, there are only two space books. In 2D, there are 17. The reason I didn't want to go to 3D is because there are 230. OK, let's thank. Uh, we have a 25-minute break.